Jason Roy's tongue put an end to the Sharks' 100% record in this season's NatWest T20 Blast as they went down by 23 runs at home to Surrey. Roy was soon on the charge, taking seven fours off the home attack before his opening partner Stephen Davis had got out of the blocks. Of the 38 runs put on for the opening partnership, Roy smashed 35 of them, those seven boundaries coming off the first 17 deliveries he faced. The Sharks would have already known that they would want to see the back of the England man sooner rather than later. Instead, they had to make do with the wicket of Davis for three in the fourth over. Matt Machen completing the dismissal to give Team Al Mills something to smile about again. That wicket made no difference to Roy, however. He just continued to play his shots in his own way, and that saw him rush to a 27-ball half-century, one which included 10 fours. Sussex have already helped themselves to two very big totals in the two victories in this competition so far, but now they are up against it as Kumar Sangakkara also joined in the fun. Surrey had 92 runs on the board at the halfway stage of their innings. The 100 soon posted two after that as Roy continued middling plenty of his shots. He and his Sri Lankan partner emphasised their class with plenty of excellent cricket shots on their way to posting a three-figure partnership for the second wicket. The pitch was playing well and none of the Sharks' attack were able to curb the rate of scoring, Sangakkara also reaching a 50 of 29 deliveries. So how the home team would have been pleased to see the back of him, Ajmal Shazad, the happy bowler, as he won an LBW which had the cricketing legend on his way for 54. But one star was followed by another as Dwayne Bravo strolled in for his debut and, as is his wont, he was soon entertaining a good crowd. Twice the West Indian cleared the rope off Mills, who was not having his best night ever. A total in excess of 200 was now assured as the score read 172 for two with three overs to go. In those, Roy completed his ton off 61 balls, his third in this format. He struck 15 fours and one six in what was a fine exhibition of T20 batting. He'd given his team a great chance of putting up a very stiff target for the Sharks. And that became just a little bit stiffer when Bravo twice more hit maximums off Mills. He was the ideal foil for Roy, this pair adding 55 runs for the third wicket off only 26 balls. Bravo making a quick fire 30 to take the total beyond 200. Both batsmen fell in the final over. Roy was finally on his way for 109, his 67th ball being his last as he was held by Machen off Chris Jordan. Then next ball, Bravo holed out to Will Beer as Surrey ended their 20 overs on an imposing 205 for four. A good start then to the reply was required, but it didn't occur. Chris Nash toe-ended the third ball to Tom Curran to give his brother Sam a wicket on his 18th birthday. And when the two brothers combined again in the next over, this time the other way round, to remove Ben Brown, the Sharks were in dire straits on 19 for two after two overs. The remainder of the power play was a subdued affair, Sussex posting 35 for two on the board, but the introduction of Zafar and Sari saw both Ross Taylor and Luke Wright lift the tempo as they now needed to. Both of those shots cleared the rope. Taylor also tucked into Gareth Batty with a couple more sixes in succession off the spinner. Over number nine went for 19 runs and the Sharks were now making a good fight of things, Taylor looking in fine fettle. Wright wasn't at his fluent best, but another maximum from him had the home team up to 90 for two at the halfway stage, another 116 runs to get. Taylor eased to a 50 off 33 balls, his partnership with Wright up to 88 when the latter holed out off Ansari for 34. Then, crucially, two balls later, Taylor was well stumped by Gary Wilson for 51, meaning that Sussex had to start over. Machen did his very best, and Sari may have got those two important wickets, but he was also expensive, the left-hander smacking him twice into the distance to just about keep the Sharks in touch, 76 more required off the final five overs. Machen helped take eight of the 16th over, thanks to his third six in quick succession, before Jordan went up to Bravo in the 17th, three four strike off successive deliveries to keep the crowd interested. The Sharks were left to find 55 more runs of the final three overs. 
But when Mayton on 27 gave Sam Curran a catch of his own bowling, the game was up. There was some hitting as the game petered out. 46 needed off two overs and then 39 off the last. In the end, a combination of Roy and the Curran's early burst had cost Sussex dear. On many other days, a total of 182 for five would not have been too bad, but here it was 23 runs shy of what was required. But the Sharks still find themselves second in the South group in spite of this loss.